This is Witchbase News for Friday the 5th of October 2021 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous news this week ...this weeks community goal will shower you with pre-engineered frameshift drives ...we'll have the latest update on the recent resurgence in Thargoid activity ...information nuggets from Frontier concerning the new SRV and fleet carrier interiors and more. And yes I have got a really bad cold this week. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe ...remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications ...and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. A new community goal launched on Thursday this week to assist in the building of the second part of the new Colonia Bridge superhighway. Part 1 of the Colonia Bridge project completed a couple of weeks back and saw the installation of a string of 30 permanently anchored megaships stretching between the bubble and Colonia. The second installation will see 8 more ships added to the route. As well as adding 8 new vessels the community goal will again offer commanders in the top tier of contributors the opportunity to name one of the ships which is again very cool. And again as before the CG is offering an extra incentive to participate ...this time in the form of some pre-engineered frameshift drives with increased range and faster boot sequence. As the CG progresses through its tiers the size of the engineered FSD increases ...starting at a size 3A ...proceeding to a size 4A and ending with a size 6A. The community goal reward which is available to the top 75% of contributors is however cumulative ...meaning that if the top tier is reached then all 3 drives will be delivered to commanders. Frontier has really upped their game with this new generation of community goals with pre-engineered modules becoming a welcome semi-regular feature ...and these 3 drives are very definitely worth obtaining along with the cash injection that CG participation brings as par for the course. We're seeing reports that both ends of the CG are moving at quite a pace as commanders jump in so it is possible the CG will end early in the bubble at least. The Colonia end of the CG is apparently having trouble supplying the necessary goods to complete the CG at that end as the limited stocks of the required items in the region rapidly dry up. It's possible that once the bubble end completes then commanders and carriers could end up using the existing bridge route itself to supply Colonia with the goods it needs to complete the CG ...so we'll see how things pan out over the week. Commander Tyran, one of the Burr Pit's dedicated sentient logic constructs has created a spreadsheet detailing the difference in jump range that drives will make when fitted to all of the ships in the game which we've linked below and if you're interested in using the Colonia Bridge to break up the 22,000 light year journey between Colonia and the bubble then Commander Mitochondria on Twitter has you covered with an excellent PDF map of the bridge so far detailing the available stop offs en route planetary, starport and megaship as well as pristine icy rings where tritium can be mined and if that isn't enough it also includes a few notable tourist sightseeing opportunities as well that again is linked below. The installation of the first part of the bridge last week coincided with the discovery of an ancient distress signal that sent commanders out searching a 50 light year bubble around one of the megaships. We won't give any spoilers here for what was discovered but if you're curious to know then the folks at Galnet News Digest on YouTube have put together a voice acted video detailing the discovery. That is also linked below. This week the Flight Assist podcast is celebrating its 50th episode with a special guest interview. Talking to friends of the Burr Pit, Commander Psykit and Commander Mal for the win on the show is none other than Charlie Hall who as well as being the tabletop editor for the website Polygon is also an outspoken fan and advocate of all things Elite Dangerous. Charlie is a regular in the Elite Dangerous Twitter sphere and has written numerous articles about the game having been a player of the galaxy spanning combat trader since day one. 
The Flight Assist podcast interviews are always an entertaining listen and it's a show that is absolutely on our recommended must have Elite Dangerous podcast list. You'll find a link in the video description to the Celebration 50th show as well as to everything Charlie Hall and if you're unfamiliar with Mal and Psykit's other work they are also two of ED's most prolific top tier streamers. You'll find those channels linked below as well, do check them out. As we reported previously last week, in game saw the resurgence of massive amounts of Thargoid activity in the Pleiades, Witch Head and California Nebula regions with extremely high threat, non-human signal sources and burning starports rapidly becoming signature events as the ever malignant slashing sunflowers reasserted their claim on the surrounding sectors. As the emergency relief forces of Operation Ida and Post Disaster Evac sprung into action they were as always backed up by the defensive forces of the AXI as well as legions of independent commanders providing likewise evacuation and anti xeno support. When anti xeno weaponry arrives into a Thargoid emergence of this type it is typical that the introduction of huge quantities of artfully deployed firepower into the danger daffodils assembled haberdashery of horror rapidly sees its doors closed with the alien menace eventually sent scurrying away with their tentacles tucked neatly between their mandibles. In this instance however it rapidly became apparent as the week progressed that this was not your typical Thargoid emergence. As wave after wave of alien panic pansy was sent for an early bath their presence in the affected zones went largely undiminished, Frontier confirming that this unusual behaviour is not a bug and is working as intended. As the Thargs Day Thursday tick rolled around this week, whilst there are some starports now under repair a significant number of stations remain on fire, their systems in a state of incursion and their crispy citizens still in need of evacuation. On top of that a further system HR1183 in the Pleiades region was actually added to the incursion list. It's too early to say yet whether the sudden arrival of so many damaged dahlias is a renewed move against the bubble but we'll continue to monitor the situation here and report back whatever happens. To lend a hand with any of this check out the Thargoid activity reports in your in ship Galnet newsfeed that will tell you where help is needed and what to bring with you. You can also link up with the AXI Operation Ida or the post disaster evacuation guys if you fancy tackling this stuff in an organised group. They handle defence, repair and evacuation respectively. Links as always to all of this are in the description below this video. Elsewhere in Galnet we awoke this morning to find the anti Thargoid forces of Aegis more concerned with a rogue admiral threatening the megaship that's under control of the individual calling themselves Salvation than they were with the colossal invasion of legions of frenzied fireferns in human occupied space. So far so Aegis. If Admiral Aiden Tanner does move against Salvation and take direct action, how Salvation responds to a direct threat from humanity rather than a direct threat to humanity will doubtless help determine a lot more about the nature and flavour of that individual so again watch this space. On Frontier's Super Cruise News livestream this week community manager Arthur told me let slip some small details regarding the new combat centric SRV planned to arrive in update 9 we think later this month and the new fleet carrier interior space feature which will follow after update 9. On the SRV front Arthur confirmed that he has used the SRV and had played with what he described as quote its weapons unquote. If you take the phrase weapons literally it is possible that the vehicle may have more than one weapon. We've obviously seen the turreted gun on top of the vehicle but we don't yet know what else the combative car has going on or even if its damage capabilities begin and end with the turret. Arthur described the vehicle as much heavier in feel than the current SRV and said it does handle quite differently to the Scarab. <laughs> But when asked directly he stopped short of describing the multi crew capable vehicle as tank like. He also mentioned that he hadn't had the opportunity to investigate the cargo carrying capabilities of the vehicle so we don't yet know if we're stuck with the two cargo slots the Scarab has or if the new heavier vehicle has more or indeed less. 
Elsewhere in the stream Arthur went on to say that he was looking forward to loading up a ship with 4 commanders and then deploying 2 SRVs with 2 commanders in each vehicle. So it seems from that that multiple multi crewed SRVs within a team will be possible. Whilst there's no official confirmation we're speculating here however that not all ships will be capable of handling the new vehicle. Given its likely larger size and multi crew focus we are wondering if the new fighting vehicle will require one of the larger ships to get it on the ground. On the subject of fleet carriers Arthur made mention of a fleet carrier interior tour stream likely happening in December that will show off the ships interior social space and accessible features. He also mentioned when showing again the teaser image from the carrier bridge that we spoke of last week that he's looking forward to watching commanders ships land on the deck outside and having those other commanders join the carriers owner on the bridge. So we can determine from that that the carriers bridge doesn't appear to be an exclusive space to the carriers owner. Other commanders will be able to visit it. So just to recap the new combat SRV is earmarked for update 9 and we believe that update is scheduled to arrive later this month. Fleet carrier interiors are set to arrive after update 9. There's a live stream planned to feature them in December which we believe will be an advanced preview of the feature so we expect to see carrier interiors arriving just before Christmas or early in the new year. A busy couple of months ahead. Are you joining the CG this week or are you rescuing burning civilians and attacking Thargoids? What features would you like to see in the new SRV? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then 07 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.